So we're staying out. It's going to really hurt the 21. He needs to get about nine more laps to be inside his fuel window. And now he's lost that clean air. Oh, oh. big wreck. Huge contact. 48 is involved. That's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Now up and over goes the 27. So Jeff Burton sliding on top. I just want to hit you. Hey, just hold tight right here. Just take a minute here. You all good there? Yeah, man. Did all I could there. It's Jeff Burton's radio. Upside down. Tell me about what it feels like to be a driver upside down in a race car. I've never, I've never experienced, but this AMR team, they immediately get to the driver, start having communications, assessing what it is they need to do. We heard Jeb talk, so he thumbs up right there. Hey, that's a signal to everybody around what the degree of intensity needs to be. That's exactly right. We met with the AMR team, and they explained how this works. So once that safety position here gets to the driver and assesses the driver's condition, that lets everyone else know in what type of rush they need to be to turn this car over. While Jeff does not like hanging upside down, they want to do this as safely as possible for both the driver and the safety workers. And as you see that, you can see he's communicating to Jeb the entire time. That's so important. Jeb, here's what we're doing. Here's what's happening. It, you know, this is a very uncomfortable position to be in. You're scared because is the car going to catch on fire? Is something going to happen? And you know those guys are there, and that communication is so important. And, you know, why doesn't he crawl out? I mean, look how close his helmet is. If he undoes his belts, he's going to be jammed upside down. You don't know if you can get out upside down. The safest thing they're telling him right now is see you right there, the hand motions, talking to Jeb. We're going to turn you back over, let you be safely extricated from this car. I mean, if you're good now, you don't want to unhook your belt and injure yourself trying to climb out. Yeah, these guys have practiced this over and over and over, how to get this car flipped back. Tons of time these these guys have put into this. They talked about uh, with us about when this scenario happens, the driver, they'll tell them to keep their helmet on. You know, as a race car driver, you're just so accustomed to being in control, right? I mean, you are you sit in something that goes 200 miles an hour and you're in control and right now you're just having to wait and and that's why i love that communication hey jeb he's that he's they've been down there the entire time talking to jeb eye to eye contact looking at him yeah, i don't want you to leave me if you're down there talking to me you don't have to talk me through this so now they're going to move this safety work back because they're going to move the car You can see he communicated that to him, though, right? He, he said, "Here's I'm going to step away. Yep. He kept his head down, moved back. And it's important they've explained to Jeb which side we're going to roll it on. The net's down. But if we're going to roll it on the driver's side, you know, keep your hands in the, all these simple things that you don't want to take any of that for granted. So there you go. Now they've rolled it over, and that extra line they had on there caught the car from tumbling all the way over. That would be a pretty big ride to fall from you know five or six feet up now they're going to extend that cable and set this thing right over a red flag is out as the safety crew continues to work to get Jeb Burton right side up and really amazing as you guys mentioned the AMR safety crew was to Jeb within seconds. They explained everything to him. They found out his condition. And listen, every time they practice it, it can be different. They may might not be rear suspension under the car. There may not be a front tire. So you have to, you know, there's no guarantee on what you're going to be able to hook to. But you hear the crowd, applause as they should be. Great job by the safety team. And now Jeb's like, give me out. Oh, yep. give me out. <laughs> yep. out. Great to see him coming out of there. Listen to the fans. Pretty amazing. Let's take another look at what happened. It all started with a car getting turned sideways. So you see right here the 26. Off turn four. Okay, gets very, very loose. Just really spins out. 
Loses control, probably had very little side force, too wide, sideways. Now it's white smoke. No one can see. The 48 of Stenhouse, the 27 sees it. He goes as far left as he can. He has a choice. Oh. Am I either going to hit the end of pit wall or stay on the racetrack? And he just launches off the 48 upside down. And then this long slide had to feel like forever. I'm not going to know what's better, sliding or tumbling. I'm going to say sliding if he's fine, but... Yeah, but watch how close Jeb was to the end of this pit wall. He has a split decision, pit road or not. The yellow barrels are not a good option. Yeah, he made, ugh, he made the right decision not to try to turn left there at the last moment. Just a no-win situation for Jeb. And the spotter coming on, asking him if he's okay, and also telling him no one's going to hit you. That would be the other thing that a driver would fear is he's in such a vulnerable position. So now the spin, look at all the smoke. So you want to say, all right, here's where I want to go, but you're just trying to miss him. And then it happens that quick. I mean, that decision has to be made in milliseconds. That's why you're, but I love slow motion replays shows us the violence. Like this will show just how much that car launches in the air. Now look at this hit right here. He lands basically on the driver's side door, tumbles onto the A-post, that shows how violent it is, but there's nothing like a full-speed replay to show you Jeb's decision-making. It is right now, left or right. And remember, you know, following the two crashes back in 2015 where cars spun onto and hit the inside wall of pit road, Pocono extended that pit wall by 100 feet back towards turn three. And think how important that was, because if that's the case, if there's 100 feet less wall, you know, if there's a 100 feet less wall, then there's a higher chance that they're hitting the end of that pit wall. So we talk a lot about these facilities. So many of those upgrades do not get mentioned. That could have completely changed the outcome of this accident. So bravo to the Pocono continuing improvement. The inside wall all the way around was a big improvement. Spent a lot of money there in, in extending that pit lane. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. You hit the inside wall. Uh, Two different times. Yeah, I think Casey weekend. Kane was yeah. one of them that and, had and slid Casey, in there. Casey Kane was one, and the yep. other one was Jeb driving a couple. Oh, that's bar. right. Yeah, that's what I remember now. He spun off three the next day after Kane yep. did it and hit the inside wall. 